This is Twit. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Time to talk automotive technology with Sam Abul Samad. He is our uh, our car guy, principal researcher at Guidehouse Insights. He's also a car podcaster, Wheel Bearings. His podcast is at wheelbearings.media. Hello, Sam. Hello, Leo. How are you this week? Well, we're a little down in the dumps. Turns out our 2019 Chevy Bolt's going to have to go back to the shop. I guess all of them are. Yeah. Um, so uh, late on Friday afternoon, uh, about uh, four thirty, uh, you know, right after the markets closed on Friday, uh, GM put out a press release, and a few minutes later, I started getting calls from reporters. Um, uh, they uh, they previously had done a couple of recalls on the Bolt um, for an issue with the batteries. There, you know, you may have heard that there's been some bolts that caught fire. The batteries caught fire. Uh, in fact, you know, the actual number of vehicles was a grand total of seven. Um, so, I mean, it wasn't a very widespread problem, but it's it's a serious issue if it does happen. So, uh, this is the first time, you know, in this announcement that, that uh, GM has actually released some details about what's going on. Uh, not much, but, but a little bit. Uh, and so, we can start to talk a little bit about what's happening. And... In fact, uh, prior to prior to this announcement on Friday, the recall only covered the 2017 to 2019 model year cars, which had the there were the older models that had the six the original 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. Uh, did not cover the 21 the 2020 through 2022 models, which have a slightly larger 65 kilowatt hour pack. Um, the the cells and the chemistry were a little bit different in those cars, but the the new recall covers those as well. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about what's going on to give people, trying to give people a little bit of an understanding of what's happening. So let's start with, you know, the basics of the these lithium ion batteries. And actually what I'm about to say applies really to all batteries. So what, you know, the, the way a, a, a battery cell is constructed, there you've got um, two electrodes, an anode and a cathode. The anode is the positive electrode. The cathode is the negative electrode. Um, the cathode uh when they when they manufacture these, the they take a, a large roll of aluminum film for the cathodes and copper film for the anodes. They coat each one of those. They have large coating machines that coat the aluminum uh, film with a mixture of lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt. Um, depending on the chemistry, it might be some aluminum in there, various other things. Um, and they roll roll that out, you know, pr try and get a nice even coating on there. You dry it, roll it back up again. Same thing with the electrode uh, or with the anode. They coat it with uh, graphite. Um, and you put a wet slurry coating on there, dry it out, roll it back up. And then these go into another part of the plant, into a, a machine that makes a sandwich of the anode, uh, a plastic separator, which is porous, and um, the cathode um, and also sandwiches uh, separators on either side of that sandwiches it all together rolls it, rolls it out um, slices it off folds those uh, for pouch cells like the ones pouch or, or prismatic cells like the ones used in the bolt um, in the case of cylindrical cells like used in Tesla's they just roll it back up again into smaller rolls that they call a jelly roll but for the larger cells used in a lot of other EVs, they fold it back and forth. And so you get a stack of these layers in there. And then they stick it into either an aluminum can for um, that they use in some vehicles or into a pouch like they use in, in the Bolt and, and, and a lot of other EVs. Um, when they do that, sometimes, apparently what has been happening with these cells in the Bolt is they're sometimes getting like the edges of the separator um, actually being folded um, a little bit. And that's a bad thing because you don't, the, the separator is designed to keep the anode and the cathode from ever touching each other. Um, when they touch each other, that's when you get into trouble. You get a short circuit, heat builds up, and bad things happen. You get a thermal runaway and a fire. And apparently they've had an issue in the manufacturing process with LG Chem where some of these separators are getting folded. The anode and cathode touch or they, they can sometimes come into contact when they're when the vehicle's charging because when that happens those electrodes can can expand and contract and um, and they also had a problem with uh, in some cases torn tabs 
Uh, so the tabs are the terminals that stick out of the pouch that they actually connect all the cells together to make a giant battery pack. Uh, when that happens, you get extra resistance, you get short circuits, and bad things happen. Um, so what's happening now is GM um, and LG Chem are working together to change the manufacturing process for these cells to fix it, to prevent this from happening again. And they're also recalling all, I think it's about 122,000 vehicles that are out in the field. And they're going to be replacing all of the battery modules in there. So if you have a bolt, um, they suggest they, there's some suggested settings so you don't over discharge the battery or overcharge the battery because that also tends to build up extra heat and increases the risk of a fire. Um, and they, they suggest people park them outside when they're not charging just so that if something does happen, it doesn't burn down your house. Yeah, that's so. what we've been. We park it out in the driveway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a little uh, scary. And I think it un it's unfortunate because it's going to uh, give people uh, who are not fans of electric vehicles a little ammunition. Like these things are dangerous. But uh, anything that can store a lot of energy, enough energy to move a multi-ton vehicle down the road at 70 miles an hour is going to have some risk of... You know, like yeah, like a, a gas, a gas, a gallon of gasoline. Yeah, cars, know, cars, a lot of energy cars explode too. sometimes too. Um, yeah. And we, we're, I guess, we're kind of used to it. Uh, how many? But how many bolt fires have there been? Uh, seven that I'm aware okay. of. Okay. So we're not talking a huge number. I mean, we're talking far less than one percent. You know, it's going to cost a fraction of one percent. GM says one point eight billion dollars to uh, do this recall. Yeah, and, and there goes LG the profit the right out the window. Batteries. Whew. Yeah, L LG Chem. Well, LG Chem is going to be picking up most of the cost. Oh, you know, when, okay. when it when it's a a manufacturing defect like this uh, from a supplier, the 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 supply contracts you know basically mean the supplier picks up most of the cost and most of the warranty costs. Uh, so I mean, there will be some cost for GM, but it, it'll mostly be borne by LG wow. um, in this case. And you know, the same thing has happened with other battery suppliers. There was an issue last year with with Samsung in uh, in Europe with BMW and Ford batteries, and uh, I think pretty much every battery supplier has had an issue at some time or another. We love the Bolt. I'm not, <laughs> I have to say we've been very uh, happy with it. Uh, it's actually our, our son's car, his 18th birthday, and uh, he's got his driver's license, and we thought, well, he needs a vehicle. And uh, he likes it. It's small. It's uh, economical. He, he likes to drive it around. It's easy. It's fun to drive. Um, and I guess at some point we'll get a letter from our uh, dealer saying, okay, <laughs> bring it in. And we're going to get a brand new battery. So that's not so bad. In fact, yeah. if you had an older Bolt, it would be even better news. You'd be kind of like almost like getting a new car. Ab absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So any, yeah. any d degradation you might have had in energy capacity will probably be addressed by this because you'll, you'll basically have a fresh battery and start from yeah. scratch. Yeah. Okay. Um, so really, it looks like it's only really bad news for LG. <laughs> <laughs> the maker is yes. of the battery. Uh, yeah, and the, and the thing the thing to keep in mind is that you know these kinds of issues are quite rare. You know, batteries do sometimes catch fire, but like I said, so do so, so do gasoline cars and diesel cars and yeah. anything else. Um, hey, refrigerators. I don't think it's we have a refrigerator. Yeah. We got we got a letter saying, did you get our letter two years ago that uh, the 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 compressor catches on fire because we'd like to replace that, and we said oh. They said, turn it off. Don't use it. And I said, oh. And they did. They for free replaced the compressor motor in there. So these things happen, you know, manufacturing defects. Yeah. What's great, and actually I, I think GM deserves some praise, is that they are biting the bullet and doing the hard thing, which is to replace every single battery and every single bolt. Wow. Wow. Yeah, and actually Hyundai already did this because they're using similar batteries from LG. Uh, they did this several months ago how many with bolts, the Kona EV. How many bolts is it? Uh, I be believe it's about 120,000. Holy cow. Sam Abul Samad, car guy. Thank you, sir. My pleasure, Leo. What do you, uh, if it did catch on fire, the, the other problem is you can't really put it out, right? Yeah, that's that's the bigger challenge. It's just extinguishing battery fires. Yeah. Um, because because they, they do generate oxygen internally from, right. as the electrical heats up. And so... You know, you can you can smother it, but it still tends to burn inside, and you basically just have to let it burn itself out. 
which is why you don't want it in your garage. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Outside, it'll probably be okay. Yeah, we're we uh, we you know parking it in the driveway, kind of far away from the house, and they were very clear that just don't charge it over ninety percent and don't discharge it fully. Uh, and and that's going to help. We never did any of that anyway. You know, we we always kept it below yeah. at ninety percent. Never never discharged. Yeah, because so. what 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 happens is when you when you charge it up to, as you get closer and closer to one hundred percent, it starts to build up heat internally. Right. You get internal resistance, right. and then the flip side is when you deep discharge it, um, you can get all of the the lithium ions um, basically getting transmitted back over to the the cathode side. Um, and you start to get um, the uh, ion. You start to get um, copper ions separating off of that uh, that film, that the anode film, uh, the the anode collector, and it starts to build dendrites across the Ooh. across. And those can short circuit. Uh, and and that's that's also what gets you short circuits, wow. you know, because wow. it'll build up basically a little spike of copper across the cell and can pierce the the separator. And then come in contact with the cathode and and uh, give you that short circuit. Wow.